All right, let's do it again. Jog Bra Avenger, take 118. Once upon a time, I had um, this alter ego that I came up with for myself, and I called her the Jog Bra Avenger. This is when my OCD was in high gear. I've, um, I've gained and lost a lot of weight multiple times in my life, usually like in increments of 40 or 50 pounds. And it's taken me a long time to understand that as with many areas of my life, I, I engaged in addictive behavior around food and exercise. And we'll save the details of that for another episode. But there was a, a long period in my life where I was super addicted to walking. I still walk every day, I walk all the time, but now I take leisurely strolls, I don't worry about burning calories or hitting X number of miles, except when I'm in, in London, then I like to try to do 12 miles a day or 14. But in general, I've kind of, I've kind of got it to an easy pace. But back in the day, I would put on my little lycra pants or shorts and I would put on my jog bra and I would just go zipping through the neighborhood and being raised uh, as both a catastrophizer, uh, just thinking it was everything was the end of the world and also being raised to like be a martyr, put everyone ahead of myself um, that I needed to rescue the world. It's a pretty bad combination. So my joke slash not joke about being the jog bra avenger was like everywhere I'd walk, I would look for um, ways that I could help. Like, is there an injured squirrel on the ground? Is there, is somebody crying? Like, what can I do? Um, and it's, it has taken me so long to really deeply understand that it is not my job to save the world. Just taking care of myself is enough. But that said, I still, um, like to be nice. I still like to help others. And I really have to watch for this line between compassion and codependency. I don't even know that it's that fine of a line. I just know that I can trip over it. And, um, before I tell you about this amazing Chihuahua rescue in which I partook recently, I'm going to tell about, uh, I'm going to give an example of the codependency side of helping a dog versus hopefully the compassionate side. So the codependency side, side of it goes like this. Back in, oh gosh, I don't know, in the mid to late 90s, um, I became uh, an, an attendant for a boy who has autism. And, and he's a man now, he's in his 30s, I think. But I was his attendant for 10 years and um, as part of uh, being his attendant, I was required to be certified in CPR. So I went and I took this CPR class and it was really kind of funny. I mean, some of the stories are a little bit sad, but the big picture, it was funny. I'm in this room with this like paramedic or EMT, whoever does the training, and there's two other women um, at the training with me. And one of them tells the story of how her brother had been shot and killed. And the other one tells the story of like how she likes to go to, I don't know, some country in South America, we'll say Peru, okay, Peru, and like climb up these cliffs and sit on the rocks and listen for messages from the rocks and like hawks flying overhead or whatever. Meanwhile, the instructor is talking to us about being at um, crash scenes where people die and she can feel their spirit leaving their bodies. And then she stops and she looks at the three of us and she says, are you, are you okay that I'm talking about this? And I said, I get visited by ghosts all the time. I'm fine with it. And the other two women said they were fine with it. So ultimately it felt like this class was probably eight hours. Instead of actually learning CPR, we just swapped ghost stories. Um, and at one point we had to get down on the floor with the resuscitanis because at least we had to pretend we were learning CPR. And as we're kneeling about to give mouth to mouth to these dummies, the woman who um, was into listening to the dreams of the Peruvian rocks suddenly says, everybody stop moving right now. And she turns to the woman with the dead brother and she says, I can see him. I can see him. He's right over there. It was like, so bizarre. So... In the end, they gave us our certificates. I mean, I'm not really sure how qualified I was, but nonetheless, I had this great sense of pride because now not only am I like the jog bra Avenger unofficially out saving the world, but I have this card that says to the world, 
I have the capacity to save lives. So I immediately am on the lookout for opportunities to save someone's life. I remember in, being in my house and I'm talking on the phone and all of a sudden I hear this really loud noise and I say, I gotta go. And I run outside like expecting to find a car crash or a gunshot victim. And I think what it really was like a car backfired. So I had to continue in this quest to find someone to save. And maybe a month or so later, I was at a crawfish boil and um, my host had this dog. I think it was a beagle or a basset hound, one of those little dogs that can make a lot of noise and not like my little dog. And the dog walks by and it starts making this noise. <laughs> So I think immediately, well, clearly this dog is dying and it, it needs me to save, I need to save her. So I very swiftly, um, before the dog can figure out what's going on, as I get behind her, I lift her up on her hind legs and I give her the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> I can't remember if a piece of pie flew out of her mouth or that's just like a revisionist history memory, but let's just pretend a piece of pie goes flying out of her mouth. And then um, one of her humans comes over and says, well, thank you very much for saving our dog's life. But actually, that's just a, a sound that she makes all the time. It's, it's common to the breed. So, you know, essentially sort of like keep your mitts off our dog. <laughs> so that was like, I'll call that like the codependency, unhealthy um, uh, behavior that I, I used to engage in. I mean, my heart was in the right place, but I could have broken that dog's ribs. All right. So that was many, many, many years ago. Fast forward to a few weeks ago and I was, um, sitting in my truck and I was about to go into a meeting and, um, I looked out my window and this couple, they were walking two or three dogs, two dogs, I don't know. And then I, I don't remember if I actually saw it happen, but I looked up again and one of the dogs, uh, they were both chihuahuas, had just slipped out of its collar and fallen down a storm drain. It was down in the sewer. And I, I sat in my truck, the old me would have like jumped out of my truck so fast I probably would have gotten run over by like an oncoming vehicle. But I really run everything these days through these um, steps that I learned in recovery. And I thought, like, do I want to get involved? How involved do I want to get? Of course, this other part of me is, is going into panic mode for these people. I have a lot of dogs. I love animals. And I, I desperately wanted to help. But I really wanted to check myself and see, like, how can I be most useful in this situation? So after collecting myself, I get out of the car, I cross the street and I tell, I reassure the woman, do I know everything's going to be okay? I do not. Um, so am I potentially lying to her? Maybe, but of course she's in a big panic. It's totally understandable. So I just kind of kneeled down with her and I said, you know, I'm right here and it's going to be okay. And maybe I suggested that she breathe or something like that. And I, and the dog is down the sewer and I'm thinking, what can I do? What can I do? And I had just seen a friend of mine heading into the same meeting. So I called him because he's very clever. He can do anything. He's just like amazing. And I said, can you come outside? I, there's a situation out here. And he came out and I explained to him what was going on. And I'm like, my arm doesn't fit down here. Nobody's arm can fit down far enough to get the dog. Uh, is there a way for us to get down here? And my friend who's very calm is like, well, there's a manhole cover right there. Let me run to my truck and get my tools. So while he was running to get his tools, which were a couple blocks away, I thought, I know what I can do. And I went back over to my truck and I pulled out a canvas tote bag um, and the belt from a bathrobe because I carry so much stuff in my truck that if like I landed in a ditch, I could sur easily survive for weeks with like ketchup packets and books. And, you know, I usually have at least two bathrobes and I mean, I just carry lots and lots of stuff. People make fun of me, but it comes in handy. So I tied the bathrobe belt to the canvas bag and then I filled the canvas bag with dog treats because I always carry dog treats with me. And I, in my mind, I was pretty sure this wasn't going to work, but I wanted to sort of uh, do this MacGyver thing where I launched the bag down into the sewer and somehow the chihuahua, enticed by the treats, will get in the bag and I will slowly 
fish the bag up and I will be the hero. Not that it's about me, but you know, it's fun to get accolades. Aww. So I'm trying to fish the dog out. And honestly, I think the only thing that that was doing was maybe, maybe distracting the woman a little bit from her distress, hopefully. In the meantime, there's now a small crowd gra- gathered around the manhole cover. My friend is back. Um, from his truck, he's lifted the manhole cover off, and this incredibly tall guy has decided he's gonna go down and he's gonna get the chihuahua. And, and the way he's gonna do that is he's gonna go in head first. So he has now gone head first into the hole, and he's trying to reach down, do you love the story? And he gets stuck in the hole. And it, then it takes like five guys to pull him out of the hole. And when he came out of the hole, like he was being, he was sick. I mean, it, it, all the blood had rushed to his head. And then, um, and then right then another friend of mine came along and he's one of these humans who, who we call fun size. And, he, and I said, well, do you want me to go down the hole? Because I knew that I could fit in that hole. I really did not want to go down that hole because I probably would have got stuck. And my very nimble friend said, I got it. And he just popped down the hole and like two seconds later, he lifts the chihuahua up and everybody starts applauding and I'm hugging the tall sick guy and I'm hugging the woman and everybody's hugging each other. And it was just this really um, beautiful story. And I don't think it was codependent. I think it was compassionate and it was this great example of... um, I, I really love it when humans uh, come together for, for a cause. Uh, and to me, the smaller, the better. And what I mean by that is I used to be like super political and go to these big protests and, you know, just take on these big, big causes. And these days I really enjoy um, this, this idea of like my corner of the world, like what's happening right in front of me. How can I um, be helpful or kind? Maybe I can be helpful and kind by just minding my own business, not giving the Heimlich maneuver to a dog that doesn't need it. Uh, and I'm still kind of sorting all this stuff out, but I'm having lots and lots of fun with it. Right, Popo? Right, Popo? Hey, y'all. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you'll like and subscribe to my channel. And if you like this episode, I hope that you'll copy this link, share it with a friend, paint it on a wall, put it on your social media. That'd be great. Thanks a million. Take it easy.